And if you guys want to turn with me to Luke 19, that's where I'm going to be reading from. I preached last night in, in a barn, so the setting's a little bit different this morning. But uh, I preached this message, and so there were a few of you that were there. And so uh, I apologize if, if it'll be a little repetitive, but I think we can read the same passage one day and see something and then go back to it the next day and then God reveals something new. And so I'm just believing that uh, he's going to speak to each of us. And uh, I'll, I'll believe that by myself if you're not going to believe that with me. I believe that he's going to speak to us today. That's why we're here. So Luke chapter 19 we're going to read verses 1 through 10. He, speaking of Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. The crowd was in the way of him seeing Jesus. So he ran on ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, that sounds very specific, when he came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus. So he called him by name. He said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, he was speaking to Zacchaeus, but to where everybody could hear, he said, today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, came to seek and to save the lost. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for your goodness. God, I thank you that you're in this place. I thank you, Lord, that e even though in our lives we have distractions and things pulling us from you and obstacles, God, that you're going to clear that out. You're going to give us clarity this morning. You're going to give us revelation this morning of who you are. God, I pray you reveal yourself to us. God, I pray that you come in as we open up to you, as we get our hearts ready to receive from you. God, I pray that you would come in, you would change, restore, redeem, do what only you can do in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen while I get one last drink of water real quick. So all of us, um, all of us in here ha have, have a talent or are or, or talented. I saw Roy, and so I thought I would use you. He's a talented soccer player. Levi used to play soccer, right? We, uh, most of us have talents. I'm not sure if Doug does. Doug, do you have any talents? He doesn't, have, he doesn't have any, I guess. So mo most, of us, most of us have at least some talent. My sister Mackenzie, uh, she's talented in many ways, but one of her greatest talents or most prominent talents is she's very good at shopping. <laughs> so some of our talents uh, make us money. It's your work or, or your career and you're and your, your talented. Some people's talents cost them money. And so I guess in Mackenzie's case, it, it costs a little bit of money because I think she is on the verge of being a professional shopper. She, she's going to go pro soon. But uh, during COVID, so, so she's always been a good shopper in person, but then during COVID and when we were all in quarantine, I think people found new hobbies or different ways to, to pass their time or occupy their time. Mackenzie just transitioned from in-person shopping to then online shopping. And so uh, the way she would pass her time or, or look forward to the next day was a new package coming in the mail. And so she would order one thing and wear it or whatever. We really weren't going out at the time, so you couldn't use it. But uh, 
she would order something new. She would want the, the next new thing. And we all do that. Maybe we all don't do online shopping. But I think all of us are, are looking for something new. Or we're, we're looking for something more. We get one thing, a material thing, and the newness wears off and the excitement wears off. And, and, we, and we don't want it anymore. Mackenzie, uh, I just, this, I didn't ask you for permission for this one, but uh, Mackenzie got a puppy. She named it Luke. There was excitement when he was a puppy. He never really grew, but he got older. And now he lives with Grandma and Grandpa Blackerby because the, 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 new, the newness wears off, right? And I'm, I know I'm kind of picking on my, my baby sister today, but, but that's with all of us. We get something or we, we strive for something and then uh, achieve it or get it. The newness wears off. And then we're on looking for the next new thing. It's not always something material. It could be relationships. Some people bounce from relationship to relationship or job to job because you get a certain job and then the newness and the excitement wears off and it's not fulfilling and you're not satisfied. And then you go somewhere else. That's part of the condition that we're in. All of us are constantly looking for something new, and that is because when we get something and we think it's going to satisfy us, and it's not capable of doing that. We're looking for things or we're trying to find things that we think are going to satisfy us that are not capable of fully satisfying or, or, or fulfilling us. No material thing, no even human relationship. I thank God for marriage. I'm not married, but marriage is a, is a good thing. A lot of human relationships are a good thing, but no one human relationship or material thing is going to completely fulfill or satisfy. There's something deeper, there's something more that we're all longing for, that we all need. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that God has placed eternity into the heart of man. So every single one of us in here, as a human being made in the image of God, we, we long, we were created to be with Him. We're longing for something eternal. And so something material is never going to fully satisfy. No amount of money, no thrill, no high, no hobby, no relationship, nothing that this world has to offer can fully satisfy the craving, the desire that God has placed inside of us. It is an innate desire. It's inherent on the inside of us, and it's because what, it's what we were created for. We're longing for something that, that on this planet, on this earth, this material world, we cannot find. We can't find. Look, look at Zacchaeus. We just read Luke 19. Zacchaeus said he was a tax collector. It says he was a chief tax collector. It only gives us two descriptions. We don't know a whole lot about him, except that he would have been Jewish. He was a tax collector, and it says he was rich. So he was, he was a chief tax collector. He would have had some influence. He would have had some clout. He would have been over people. He would have had power. He was a tax collector and he was rich. So he would have had power and he would have had money. And those are two things that a lot of people spend their whole life searching for. Spend their whole life fighting for. Spend their whole life seeking after more power, more influence, more popularity. And then they get it and it doesn't satisfy and so they want more. And you have people who spend their whole life in a search for power or a position or clout or authority. Or you have people who spend their whole life day after day working f just for money. And God can use money. Money in itself is not a bad thing. But power and money, two things that so many people spend their whole life searching for. And Zacchaeus had both of them. He would have had enough money to get just about anything that the material world had to offer. But yet he wasn't fulfilled or he wasn't satisfied because it said he was still seeking after something. He had power, he had money, but yet he was still seeking after something. He was still longing for something. The Bible says, what we just read, that he was seeking to see who Jesus was. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. He, had, he could get any, about anything that the world had to offer but he was seeking to see who Jesus was. And I think all of us, whether we realize it or not, are seeking to see who Jesus is. I looked it up yesterday before I preached at the barn, and I saw the, the most recent statistic is 7.9 billion people on the planet. And I would say that every single one of us 
are seeking to see who Jesus is. Some people hate Jesus. People from different religions or people who are atheists would disagree and say that they're not seeking to see who Jesus is. People run to different religions or to different things. But every single one of us has that desire on the inside. And it's because we were created with it. All of us, every single one of us in this room, are seeking to see who Jesus is. We all long to know who our Creator is. We all long to know who created us or why we were here, what our purpose is. We can't deny it. We can't help it. It's in us. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. All of us are seeking to see who Jesus is. All of us are longing to know Him a little bit deeper, a little bit more. But the Bible says that Zacchaeus, he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he couldn't see Him on account of the crowd because he was small in stature. So he was seeking Jesus, as most of us in this place would, would probably say or claim that we're seeking to see Jesus. He was seeking to see who Jesus was, but he, he couldn't because of his stature. He couldn't see Jesus because of the state that he was in. And some of us are trapped or stuck in a state of mind or, or stuck in a state of sin or stuck in a, in a state of, of depression or, or where we feel like we can't get out. We're stuck in a state, the stature, the state that we are in. We cannot see Jesus because of his stature or because of the crowd. He could not see him. So he had to separate himself from some people. He had to separate himself or get up from the environment that he was in. Because he had the desire, but he couldn't see him because there were some obstacles. There were some things blocking him. But because of the desire that we all have, even if we don't recognize it, because of the desire that Zacchaeus had, the Bible says it caused him to run on ahead of the crowd and to climb a tree in order to see Jesus. Our desire will determine if we're willing to get up out of the state that we're in. Our desire for Him will determine what we're willing to let go of. Relationships that we're willing to let go of or people or circumstances or situations or habits that we're willing to let go of in order to see Him. Because we have the desire, but sometimes there's some things blocking us from seeing him blocking our vision his desire caused him to run on ahead and to climb in order to see Jesus we all have this desire and like I said sometimes people take that desire and they run to the wrong places or run to the wrong people or run to the wrong things our, our desire if it's if it's misplaced if we don't recognize it for what it is the what we need to fill us the thing that we are craving we can look in all the wrong places. We can try to find it in all of the wrong people or all of the wrong things. But Zacchaeus had, had tried what the world had. He had it at his disposal. He had the, he had the money. He had what, what many people long for and crave for. He had had it, and yet it still left him wanting. So his desire brought him to Jesus. And the desire that we all have is intended to bring us to Him. It's intended to draw us closer to Him. It's intended to draw us closer to His heart. It's intended to draw us closer to His Word. Our desire will determine what we're seeking after, and we have to recognize it for what it is. So, so Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. It caused him to run on ahead and, and to, to climb a, a sycamore tree, if you didn't know it, if you knew the song. Zacchaeus is a wee little man. You probably knew that. But uh, Zacchaeus climbed the tree and then Jesus came. Jesus came and it said when he came to the place, immediately he spoke to Zacchaeus and he said, I must stay at your house today. It didn't say that Jesus was, was passing along and then saw some guy in the tree and wanted to check out what was going on. Jesus was coming and when he came to the place... It words it very specific. When he came to the place, immediately he said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. There was, there was an, an urgency. Hurry and come down for I must 
stay at your house today. This does not sound like an accident. This does not sound like a coincidence. This was a divine appointment. This was a divine moment in time where Zacchaeus, the desire had brought him to the place where he was ready to receive from Jesus. Jesus did not pass by on accident or by coincidence. The drawing and the desire that Zacchaeus had and that we have is intended to get us to the place. Jesus came and passed by the place. And I think that it's interesting, and I don't think that it's an accident, that in the Greek, the word that's used that we read in the English for place, it, it is also used for opportunity. So Jesus came to the place where Zacchaeus was finally going to give him the opportunity to come in. Where Zacchaeus was finally had the opportunity to receive Jesus. This was not an accident. This was not a coincidence. This was orchestrated in a divine moment and point in time where Zacchaeus was ready to receive from Jesus. Undoubtedly, he had heard of Jesus. Heard of the man from Nazareth who was going around and healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, restoring people. Zacchaeus had heard of him, followed maybe from a distance, but he had not yet known Jesus. Personally, he had not yet received Jesus. And so when, when, when he was seeking after him and Jesus came to the place, again, this was not an accident, and Jesus said, come down for I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus came down and the Bible says that he received him joyfully. He received Jesus himself. Zacchaeus as a tax collector would have been Jewish. And so he would have been familiar with the religion of the day. He would have been familiar. He would have been able to quote and recite the prayers of the day. He would have been able to recite the scripture of the day. He would have grown up in a religious family. He, he would have, he'd have been familiar with all of that, but, but something hadn't fulfilled him. Something hadn't changed him because he was a tax collector. He would have been living outside of the grace of God, cheating people. But then when Jesus comes, it says he received him. Religion didn't cut it for him. Going through the motions didn't cut it for him. But when he received Jesus himself, he changed. Immediately, he experienced joy. He had a fulfillment. He had a satisfaction that he couldn't find anywhere else. So much so that it caused him to change. He, he was one way. He was seeking Jesus, but he was in a state, the stature he was in. Jesus comes. He receives from him. He gives him the opportunity, and immediately he changes. Because he says, whatever I've done, whatever I've done, I, whatever I've cheated people, whatever I've stole, I'll give it back fourfold. There was an immediate change in transformation, not because of rules or rituals or regulations, but because he had received Jesus himself. Not because he grew up in a religious family. Not because he went to church every day, and I'm not discouraging you from coming to church. This is a great place to be. But church can't save you. Religion by itself cannot save you or will not do it. People look in all the wrong places or they're satisfied with their own personal religion or devotion when it takes an intimate experience and relationship and knowledge of God Almighty. And it's not that he's hiding from us. It's not that he was hiding from Zacchaeus. He was waiting for Zacchaeus to get to the point to give him the opportunity to come in. And as soon as he did, immediately, Jesus was there. Jesus was there. And when he received Jesus, everything changed. He was changed from the inside. He was changed. It was not just playing church. He was not just looking the part. He immediately changed when he received Jesus. And it says that the crowd grumbled. So a man who, who would have been kind of an outcast from the Jews wouldn't have been considered a part of the church body, the religious bar body, part of the people of God. He would have been considered a traitor because he was a tax collector. He received Jesus and found joy and fulfillment and satisfaction and contentment and restoration and redemption in seeing Jesus and, and receiving Jesus. And then the crowd grumbled. The religious people were mad. 
And they said, what kind of man is this that he would go in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner? They missed what was happening right in front of them. They were familiar, again, with religion. They would have looked the part, sounded the part. They could have said all the prayers and, 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 and looked spiritual. But they missed who Jesus was. They missed what God was doing right in front of their eyes. They were grumbling because of what God was doing. And so Jesus, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, but in front of everybody, that today salvation has come to this house. He also is a son of Abraham. And if you're in this place today and you receive Jesus, you are a son of Abraham. You are a part of the family of God. Because what Jesus was saying was being a son of Abraham, being a child of God, being a part of my people, it's not about looking the part. It's not about just sounding the part. He'll change you when you get to know Him. But it's about faith in Jesus. It is about receiving Him and letting Him have His way in your life. This man is also a son of Abraham because he received Jesus. Because he received Jesus. So, so the religious people missed out on what God was doing right in front of their eyes. Jesus said the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Son of Man was a prophecy from the book of Daniel talking about there's going to be a man in human form and he's also God. Emmanuel, God with us. They missed out on what God was doing right in front of them because they were so used to the rituals and going through the motions. They missed out on what God was doing right in front of them because they were complacent and because of pride. Zacchaeus had his obstacles, his state, the stature he was in, the environment he was in, but the crowd missed out. Zacchaeus received from Jesus when the whole multitude, the whole crowd missed out because of their complacency and because of their pride. And I can't help but wonder how many of us in this place, how many of us individually in our lives, we miss out on what God is wanting to do, on what Jesus is wanting to give you, on the gifts and the call that he's wanting to give you, on the restoration that he's wanting to give you, either because you're, you're used to the state that you're in or because of complacency or because of pride. One man received Jesus joyfully and the rest of the people missed out. And they were grumbling because because of complacency and because of pride, they didn't recognize or realize the desire that they had for Jesus. I'm going to look at Revelation 3, verse 20, real quick. So we read Luke 19, where Zacchaeus is seeking Jesus, and then Jesus, it seems simultaneously, is seeking him. And he tells Zacchaeus, Come down for I must stay at your house today. And there's that image and that idea of Jesus coming in and welcoming him in. Revelation 3 verse 20. Jesus is speaking to the church of Laodicea. And everything he says is true for us in here this morning. Jesus is speaking here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. The Greek word for place, where it says that Jesus came to the place, I said, can also be used for opportunity. The word here for door in Revelation 3 can also be used for opportunity. So Jesus is saying, I'm at the door and I'm knocking. He's speaking to the church. If you're here and you're part of the church, this is us. I'm at the door and I'm knocking. And if you hear me and you open the door, if you give me opportunity to come in, then I will come in and eat with him and, and he with me. I'll have fellowship with you. I'll have relationship with you. You will, you will know me. But we have to open the door and give him the opportunity. It's not enough to know him from a distance it's not enough to just go through the motions and it's easy for us to get stuck in that cycle but Jesus is always seeking after us you see I'm talking about Zacchaeus seeking after God it says that Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus 
when he didn't realize it, but Jesus was seeking him. And a lot of times we feel like we're, we're seeking God, we're seeking after him, and maybe we don't feel anything and it, and, it, and it feels like he's distant or he's not there. But all it takes is to open up and to, to be open to receive. And his promise is that he'll come in. Jesus said he came to seek and to save. He's at the door knocking. We have to open up and let him in, and we will experience joy and satisfaction that we will not be able to find anywhere else, and we'll experience restoration. I'm going to invite you guys to stand to your feet right now. So Jesus was seeking Zacchaeus while simultaneously Zacchaeus was seeking after him, and Zacchaeus got to the point where he was ready to receive, where he just opened up and gave Jesus the opportunity. And Jesus called him by name. He said, Zacchaeus, I must come in to your house today. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and so he would have cheated people. He obviously didn't have a good reputation because. The people were mad that Jesus was around him. He, he didn't live a, a, a good life in our standards. And Jesus came when Zacchaeus gave him the opportunity and he said, Zacchaeus. The name Zacchaeus means pure and innocent. He would have been anything but pure and innocent. But when he gave him the opportunity, Jesus came and he called him what he was intended to be. Jesus came and he brought restoration. And the promise is that if we will open up to him, that he will restore us. I believe Jesus is everything he says he is. And I believe that when we open up to him, that he'll fill us and he won't leave us empty. And so I know this message was short and simple but I want to give us the opportunity to give him the opportunity to come in so I'm going to pray and then I'm going to give an altar call and invite you to come forward if you know that there's a desire for something more if you know there's been obstacles or things keeping you from him or if you felt distant it's not that he's distant. We just have to get to the place like Zacchaeus where we are ready to receive from him. And he will come in and eat with you and you with him. And we will experience relationship and intimacy with him. And he will change us when we truly receive him, when we truly receive from him. And so when I preached this message last night, I, I, I said this, I'm going to say it again. There's no formula or, or magic words to say to, to get him to come in. It is a state. It is a place where we get, where we allow him to come in. And so right now, Lord, God, I pray that you move on your people right now. Lord, you know the distractions that we experience. God, you know the state that we're in. You know, God, the environment that we're in, the things that separate us from you or, or pull us from you, when deep down we all have a desire, Lord, for intimacy with you, every single one of us. God, we long for you. And I know, Lord, that it is your character you long for us, that while we're seeking after you, Jesus, you are seeking us and you're waiting for the opportunity to come in. And so right now, God, as we, as we come forward, as we sing to you, as we pray to you, as we open up our hearts and our lives, God, I pray that you would come in. God, I pray you restore us. Call us back to what we're intended to be. God, make us pure and innocent before you. God, we ask you to come in. Jesus, come in and restore so we're going to play.